My name is Mary Fons. I'm a writer, editor, and live streamer. I specialize in American quilts and the life of quilts out in the world in culture. I'm making this video because I can't let another day go by without doing it. Uh, I had a whole script, it's right there, uh, but I, I'm not gonna use it. I just, I'm just gonna talk to you. If you're a designer who is cutting up vintage and antique quilts for use in your designs, you have to stop now. I'm gonna tell you why, and I'm gonna explain uh, why anyone who's watching this video should care that this stops. Um, it's hard because a lot of the people who, who do this are women, and quilts have been uh, a way for women to make money for a very long time. Uh, so it's hard to say, like, don't make money from this, but it's bigger than you, and it's bigger than me. And uh, so I'm gonna go through the arguments that people have, the defenses that they have for doing this, uh, and I'm just gonna smash all of them. And then I wanna be part of the solution, right? So I'm gonna offer some alternatives for doing this. Most of you are very talented and you know, you're know you grown, so you can figure out what you're gonna do when you stop cutting up quilts, but, uh, but I'll give you some ideas that I have. I spend a lot of time with quilts, a lot of time. And I love, I love quilts. Um, everyone should. Quilts are, are our history. They're important because they, they hold our memory. Uh, they are documents, historical documents. Uh, people who couldn't, uh, for one reason or another, um, they couldn't write down their history on paper. Women, marginalized people, use quilts to, to tell the world that they were there. And there's so many quilters out there. Uh, we're still doing that. There's millions of quilt makers in the United States. Our quilts are so important to us because they communicate without words who we are. <laughs> Oh, I'm super upset. <laughs> I'm like mad and very sad. I got it together, I'm cool. The quilt clothes trend uh, isn't new. It, it's happened several times before. Um, Adolfo made a famous dress for Gloria Vanderbilt uh, out of a crazy quilt. Ralph Lauren did it too. He, he cut up vintage and antique quilts and made clothes out of them and, and uh, quilters were pissed, they were so mad. Uh, but the Adolfo dress was couture, like maybe five people tops, you know, got, got one of these crazy quilt dresses. So very few crazy quilts were harmed in the making of, of, of that. And in the case of Ralph Lauren, you know, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, it was high priced uh, clothing. Not that many people, you know, could afford to buy these things. And, uh, and it came and went in a, in a season or two. I mean, it, it just wasn't a trend that lasted very long. So then in 2017, a designer uh, named Emily Baudet, she uh, burst onto the fashion scene with her uh, menswear collection. And many of the pieces in that collection used uh, vintage and antique quilts that had been destroyed, right? I can't help it, sorry. The difference between what happened with Adolfo and Ralph Lauren and what happened with Baudet is that now we have social media. And so a trend that happens in New York or Paris or London, whatever, it hits the masses quickly. The volume of people who see any trend is just it's astronomically big. And so clothes that became very hot, Baudet got tons of press, she still does. I mean, I think she's more famous than ever at this point and good for her. But the, the trend of the quilt coat and the quilt whatever, we're gonna look at all the, the items you can buy from the desiccated corpses of beautiful antique quilts. All of a sudden, it seemed, um, these quilt clothes were absolutely everywhere. This trend, it just, it, everybody who's interested in fashion and some people who weren't, you know, saw these things on social media, saw these clothes, not just from Baudet, but copycats and things. In the beginning, I was like, you know, whatever. Like, I love quilts. If people love quilts and some of them are turned into coats, like, okay. But it's been five years since Baudet launched her menswear line. Five years of a lot of people uh, a lot of independent designers on Etsy, eBay, uh, through their own websites. You search a hashtag quilt coat on Instagram. It's amazing how many posts you'll find. Uh, quilt clothes, uh, uh, quilt coat, chore coat, 
cottage core quilt coat, whatever. I mentioned the the dealers, you know, the purveyors of these cutter quilts that that people sell to the designers uh, for use in their clothes. I think the first time I realized that I had I had to say something in a public forum and just like pray it gets out there. It was when I saw this uh, this seller on Instagram. Uh, doing a quilt drop. Designers do it too. They'll talk about like quilt drop coming tomorrow and they'll like advertise the quilts that they have gotten that are like on the chopping block, right? These lambs for the slaughter. They advertise what they've got and so people can like jump in on what quilt they want the designer to cut up. I mean quilts stacked high in you know garages, in cars. This is deeply fucked up. It's just wrong. I don't think a lot of people realize how bad it's gotten. I think maybe you don't know. Um, and so I'm going to show you all the goods that you can buy that have been made from uh, quilts that have been cut to ribbons. The aforementioned coat, the chore coat. I still don't totally understand what chores you're doing in these things, but whatever. Then we have dusters, a different sort of coat. We'll come back. We'll come back to the dusters in a minute. You've got your vests. Very nice. Dresses, of course. A lot of these are made from quilt tops, you know, unfinished quilts that could be finished. Skirts. Pants. I think these are really, I think they're dumb. Sweatshirts. Jumpsuits. Jumpsuits. Really? I bet you five dollars that the people who have purchased quilt jumpsuits have not worn them outside. I just, I mean, apparently you can get uh, just a quilt pocket or a quilt sleeve if you can't do the whole thing. Love that for you. This one, oh. statement collars. Are you kidding me? What even is that? I, I mean, I'd rather wear a pair of the pants, a ruffled, Quilt collar? It's just so dumb. What are you doing? Tote bags, obviously. Corsets. That was interesting, finding this one. Corsets. It's just sexy. Cottage hardcore. Bucket hats. Also just, just dead sexy, don't you think? Face masks. Of course. Of course, the face masks. Fanny packs. I'm sure that our quilt mothers and sisters would be so happy to know their quilt that they labored over and stitched their name into and the names of their family members. I, I'm, I'm sure they'd be thrilled to know that they've been turned into a bum bag. If only I could tell them. Shoes. This one is interesting. That's not going to work. Quilts are, are not meant to be worn on the feet outside. I'm just warning you. If you're thinking about buying a pair, I would advise you not to. Various pouches and zipper things. One of them is advertised as a self-care pouch. I don't know what that means. Of course, the Christmas ornaments and stockings. This one's been around for a long time. Toys, cute, I admit, okay. And then just like a bunch of other crap, like placemat trays, like TV trays, scrunchies. I don't know what that heart thing is. And there's scarves, of course, and just like, there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. Oh, the pet clothes, the chore coats for the dogs for all their chores that they have to do, cat collars. The animals are adorable. I am sure they hate, they hate wearing those. Now, I'm going to go through all of the arguments that people have that I've heard as to why this is okay. And I'm going to tell you that it isn't okay. And I'm going to tell you why. The quilts that I use in my designs are quilts that have lived their best life. Quilts that nobody wants anymore. Worn and faded and just kind of loved to death. Bullshit. Some of you are lying, not all of you. I've seen uh, quilt garments and different things made from quilts that were clearly pretty worn. But, but the thing is, people want a, a, a quilt coat or whatever, but they don't want one that's really in rags. Most of the quilt clothes and things that I see are clearly made from quilts that were intact and not faded and not torn. The batting is not coming out of these quilts. You can't cut the pieces that you need for a coat, a duster perhaps, without having a really big quilt in the first place. If you've got a really nice looking duster 
or a great looking jumpsuit that was made from a quilt that was not damaged. It had not lived its best life. And my second sort of response to this is, who are you to make that call? A quilt that's intact has a life for who knows how many people into the future. Just because you found it on eBay or in a flea market or something, it doesn't mean that it's over for that quilt. You're taking something that could be of use to many and sacrificing it for the desires of a single person. And may I point out, some people who talk about this, who really hate this practice as much as I do, they'll say that cutting up a quilt is akin to murder. And I usually stay away from that because it's a lot, but, but we're using the term life in the context of quilts, you know, as if they have a life. If something has a life and you destroy it, it's kind of murder. Look, if I made a quilt and in 50 or 100 years nobody was doing anything with it, I'd be happy that it was turned into something beautiful. Not everyone is you. I make quilts, I know a lot of quilt makers, and I've asked a few uh, what they think about this. Quilters today, we're no different from quilters back in the day. We make quilts. Most of us are women, not all of us, but most of us are women. We love to make these things. They are records of us. We spend time with them, we design them, we, we spend time together making them. It's, it's a whole thing. We, we know that when we're dead, we can't do anything about what happens to our quilts. We know that. But we hope, our intention, our intention, is that our quilts might be valued by, um, by people who could, who could use them. And we don't mean that they could hopefully use them as a fanny pack. Using American quilts in my designs is a way to honor our heritage. I understand what you're, you're doing here. I understand what you mean, where this comes from, because you wanna honor a quilt and that heritage, right? That vast, deep heritage of quilt making in America that we have, you wanna honor it by, by making it into something that might be more public. Sometimes I hear, you know, well, I'm taking a quilt that was ignored and, and making it, you know, into something that more people can enjoy and stuff, okay? So what you're doing, and I, this is a, this is a heavy term, but it's, it's the truth. You're appropriating quilt culture. You're appropriating it because what you're doing is you're taking that heritage that exists in our quilts and you're, you're using it for your purposes to make money. So all of that wonderful stuff about quilts, you know, the memories and the tradition and the ancestors and the, the, the stories, you know, all of this, you get to have that in your statement collar, but you didn't work for it. And that pisses me off too, because it's not honoring, it's using, you're using. And that's not nice. I'm making sustainable fashion, cause old, Up upcycling. Jesus, take the motherfucking wheel. I, this one, okay. How exactly is this in any way sustainable? Do you know who doesn't make quilts anymore? Dead people. Yeah, dead people. Most of the quilts that you're using were made by people who are, you know, dead. So there's only a finite amount of those quilts around. Uh, there's a lot of them, it's true, but there's only so many. And every time you destroy one, you're taking one out of circulation. It's just, you can't keep doing it. All of you, all of you people, you, you can't keep doing it. It's not sustainable and I cannot, I cannot with this upcycle thing. To upcycle means to take something that is not of use, whatever, and make it into something useful. A quilt that is intact, it can be really old. It can be really old, but it's still useful to a lot of people. So to take an object that has all of this use left in it and make it into a tote bag is not upcycling. It's the opposite. It's going like this. You're going like this. You're not going like this. You're not increasing the value of that quilt. Besides, you're ruining the design. You're, you, the integrity of the quilt that was made is, is totally, 
it's in the garbage now because you cut it up. You know, not every quilt is art, but a lot of them are. Quilts are pattern and they are uh, color and they're meant to be, you know, one thing. And so when you cut it up, you lose all of that design. It's destroyed. So you're not upcycling at all. And another thing on this, if I see another person use the word dead stock, I may, I may begin st stabbing people. Dead stock, dead stock is stuff that you have in your warehouse or your studio or whatever that you can't sell. A store has dead stock, stuff they can't move. If you have items made out of these quilts in your store and you can't sell them because the trend has passed and nobody gives a shit about this stuff anymore, that's dead stock. Don't you dare, <laughs> don't you dare call a quilt dead stock. It's so offensive. It dead stock. I can't. I, um. The people I'm talking to probably aren't even watching at this point. Um, and I understand. I understand. I know I'm going to piss some people off. I'll take it. You know, I'll take one for the for the quilt team. Alternatives abound. Why not actually upcycle? I don't need to tell you or anybody at this point the crisis we're in as a result of the fast fashion industry. It's disgusting. We all know it. And if you want to talk about dead stock, you're going to want to look at these people and their brands and their stores and what happens when all of that dead stock goes somewhere else. These different materials, sewing them together is a challenge, but you can figure it out. All of the colors, all of the, the material you could ever want and more is available. So use material from actual dead stock, actually upcycle. That would be great. You could repair them, restore them. If you find a quilt that's on its last legs, it's lived its best life as a quilt. You could be, you could like have like a quilt rescue operation, you know? Like, I love your quilt. Like, thanks, it's a rescue. Who rescued who, you know? Make garments that are inspired by. Plenty of people do this. I mean, high fashion, independent designers, you know, uh, chain stores too, Target. Everybody's, everybody's on the quilt clothes train, right? But Target isn't cutting up quilts, thank God. I talked to one designer recently and he makes uh, garments, you know, in this style, but he makes his own quilts. And he says it's great because you can make the pieces that you actually need. You don't have to try to match seams that don't match. You know, you have what you need because you made it yourself. So be inspired by the motifs and the beautiful patterns and the colors that you see in quilts. Don't ruin them in the process. I have alternatives for you too. Be like Rihanna's boyfriend. ASAP <laughs> Rocky wore a quilt to the Met Gala and it was completely intact. He wore it, you know, with respect and he got a lot of press and everybody loved it and it was all in one piece. So, you know, be like ASAP Rocky. We all wanna be like ASAP Rocky. I wanna be like ASAP Rocky. The garments I mentioned, you know, that are like inspired by quilts or whatever, buy those. This is real, by the way. And no quilt was harmed, you know? That's just a print on her panties, so. I had to see it, so you have to see it. That's the one thing I haven't seen made from uh, vintage or antique quilts. I haven't seen underwear. Hire a quilt maker or a garment maker, a designer, to make you something from scratch. You can pick everything. It can be totally bespoke. You can pick everything you want, every fabric, da da da. Perfect. You could just sit on a quilt. It worked for the Kardashians, see? They're happy. Solange sat on one. No, the quilt's fine. I think the pandemic may have something to do with how popular it got because it's been really scary and people have been home more than more than usual scrolling through their phones and and people want comfort and there's nothing better than a quilt to give you comfort. I mean, that's like part of what they do best, you know? So I understand the appeal. I do. Um, but it's it's gone too far. That's my point. This probably from the jump has sounded sanctimonious and patronizing. Uh, 
I, I can't care about that. I have to talk about this, and I have to talk to you. You know, the consumers who are buying this stuff, the quilt dealers who are selling these quilts, you know, sourcing them from God knows where and selling them, and of course the designers who are, are perpetrating these cultural crimes. I can't care if, uh, if you don't like it, um, because if I succeed in this video, if it gets seen by anybody who's involved in any of this and it changes their mind about what they should do the next time they're faced with a decision to make uh, about whether to take scissors, scissors to a quilt, um, then, then I will have, I'll be happy, I will have saved one. It's not just the quilts, that are the victims here. The designers and the quilt dealers and the consumers, you're all being chewed up by a, a, a capitalist system that doesn't care about people or history. And I'm not a communist, I'm not a socialist. Don't come for me with that bullshit. I, it's not about that. I'm not like railing against capitalism. I just wanna point out that capitalism is eating our quilts alive. We have to fight back. We have to be the ones who preserve our history and not tear it apart to make a dollar. And I want people to succeed. I want all of the women, some of them, they're my age. Many of them are younger than me. I love the entrepreneurial piece of this. I, I love it, it's, it's so great. <laughs> but you're using the wrong material. I am not out to cancel anybody. I hate that shit. Um, obviously, I'm not naming names in this video. I wouldn't, I never would. I mean, I mentioned Baudet, but she's like, big deal. I just have to do what I can, anything I can, to stop this. It's gotten out of control. We have to stop now. We have to move on from this trend. And it is serious. Fashion, you know, it's not that serious. Until you start taking culture that was made mostly by women and, and I just why is it okay to cut up the work of women women's history and slice it up I can't I can't think of another thing that we do that with and and so I want you to think about it and I want you to I want you to think about it I know I'm like upset I'm getting mad on the internet but I am mad I'm really fucking mad I can't see this anymore I can't research this anymore. And so I'm just gonna put this out there and I'm gonna hope somebody sees it. And if you think somebody should see it, I hope you'll share it. I guess it's like a public service announcement, you know? And that's what I have to say about it. That's all I got. <laughs>